Hello, right. everybody. Welcome to China Talk episode. It's not still. It's still not. You know, episode fifty six. Remember, it is fifty nine now. That uh, that overlay is lying to you. That's how we. That's how we differentiate the real fans from the fake ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, this uh, China talk is gonna be a little bit different in the sense that it's it's world's times, man. It's worlds, worlds. We get to talk about it. The group stages were set yesterday. I th no, two days ago. Memory is beautiful. So we know what the groups are now. <clears throat> Just to freshen everyone up, Group A has CLG, Flash Wolves, Coup, and Pain Gaming. Group B has Fnatic, Invictus Gaming, AHQ, and Cloud Nine. Group C has SKT, H2K, EDG, and Bangkok Titans. And Group D has LGD, KT, Team Solo, Sadness, and Origin. <laughs> so, alright. Let's get into it. Uh, we're just only going to touch on Group A a little bit just to get uh, like everyone's thoughts on who's getting out of the groups. Group A doesn't have a Chinese team, so we really won't spend that much time talking about it. Uh, unless, of course, you consider Flash Wolves Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're not getting into this. Uh, <laughs> ah, <all right. laughs> so group A, just a little bit. Let's actually start with Jackson on this one, because of course still, this is the group of faith. Alright, Jax. Um, Who do you yeah, think is getting out? So CLG and Crew Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. To be fair gonna, though, I haven't yeah. I haven't watched like any Flash Wolves games. Yeah. Where I have watched pain games, but and I'm assuming who he like won't just completely get ass blasted in the jungle and be like absolutely terrible. So yeah, it'd be kind of weird if they didn't get out. Do you think it's and, gonna like, be in that order, uh, CLG or Koo, or do you think Koo, Yeah, like I don't know. It's actually hard to say because a lot of people, a lot of people, like I'm not very educated on things that aren't SKT in Korea, yeah. but a lot of people seem to say that Koo is very uh, like meta dependent. So, I mean, I guess it depends because this is like the hugest patch change from any major tournament versus the regular, like, uh, various leagues going on. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if they can adapt to that, then they should take first. But if they can't, then there's a realistic shot of CLG taking first. Also, um, I'm trying to think here. Oh, yeah, Double If was like kind of shit talking both KT and Ku on stream, but you know, he's double if so. Yeah. Who knows who knows the validity of that statement or if they even have scrim results against them. So <laughs> Alright, now let's go to good old Kelsey. What uh, what's your take on this group? Uh, I think it'll be Ku and C L G with Ku in first. Just because uh, when we do discuss the meta changes, it chances are it'll still be top favored and Smeb is one of the best top winners of the tournament. Also, in terms of the a lot, the power that supports have had in the current meta, like Gorilla is really, really good. So the big question for me is CLG versus Flash Wolves, because even though CLG is theoretically better than Flash Wolves in terms of a player-by-player -player basis and everything else, I think that Karsa is really good as a jungler, and the fact that CLG will be hurting in terms of jungle synergy might be a way of something that the Flash Wolves can exploit, because I would say like the big strong points of their team are their jungle and support. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Of course, if they are playing Never Lose, I thought for a while they had Kramer. Like This shows how much attention I pay. Um, so what's going on? But if they do play Never Lose, who's like pretty, pretty bad, um, <laughs> that's something that can easily be abused no matter how good Sword Art is. So like Never Lose, everyone keeps talking about Stake, but if it is Never Lose playing, that's like he's definitely the worst player on that team. Mm -hmm. uh, even with all the shit that Stake gets. So anyway, yeah. All right, all right, Emily, curious right. to this one. So I had to actually review this group, and by the time I think the show's released, I will have already written an article on it. But mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing for the past like couple days is rewatching vods of these four teams and seeing how they matched up. Um, I think that Beast, I actually picked, and it honestly depends if they can get like, Smithy's visa issues filled out as yeah. opposed to. Um, having who he, I think who he will be fine in terms of, you know, just base mechanics, being able to play the jungle, etc. 
The jungle is a really important position for me, um, and I think that Carsa will actually, as Kelsey alluded to, have a huge advantage there. As far as I do know, though, um, they are playing Never Lose because Kramer is back in Korea right now. So mm -hmm. um, I don't. I I actually talked to a couple of people who follow right. LMS a lot more closely than I do uh, before writing, and they uh, didn't really know why. Because uh, but. He could still be listed as a sub, I think. Um, I'm not. I'm not actually, honestly, 100 percent sure about that. But um, going in, you want to make the assumption that they're actually going to be playing NL and and Sword Art. Um, a lot of people are talking about Pain Gaming, and obviously that's a team that I'm very like, very very familiar with. Um, I think that they have a chance to play spoiler in this group. I also think that if if a wildcard team ever had a chance of making it out of groups, this is definitely like, like, I feel like all four of these teams were looking at this group and they're like, oh yeah, I got this. <laughs> like, this is such an easy group. All yeah. right, we can do this. Um, I think Ku looked very strong in the gauntlet. And additionally, the thing about Ku and uh, in subsequent interviews, like there's a really great gorilla interview out right now um, that Grace translated one of uh, the other freelancers who works at all Esports and, she um, translated this interview with Gorilla, and basically, like every single interview that the Ku Tigers have done prior to uh, following the final, the summer final, and then obviously I am, they've all come out and said, we're still really embarrassed. Like, that still carries with us. And even though they do have certain troubles and different metas, I think this is going to be a team that isn't going to leave any sort of preparation out. Like, I feel like they'll they'll even prepare for pain gaming, even mm -hmm. though I, I honestly don't think pain has a chance of offing, like, taking even one game off the Koo Tigers. Okay. Um, I think that I actually see this. Yeah, I know that's uh, here's like all the pain gaming fans, all like two of them that watch China Talk are gonna roast me for that. Um, but I actually picked picked Ku and Flash Wolves. Um, as weird as that sounds, because I'm also there not even high. I know I'm not even high on that. Angers the pain gaming fans. Angers the CLG it fans. I'm just making everyone super angry. Right. Um, I I do think though, if X Smithy plays, then then CLG will take second. And it's really close between those two teams. It's going to depend on the like top and bot lane being a mismatch, and then obviously the jungle being a huge mismatch. Um, the reason why I said that is actually because I think that CLG is a team, how they've done well this year, going back and watching all of their, uh, going through all their games, is that they work, they finally like move together as a team. They finally communicate as a team. And I think disrupting that communication, as we've seen from even like top level teams, it affects the overall team synergy. And I think that's a perfect uh, opportunity for the Flash Wolves with a jungler like Karsa to take advantage of that. Yeah. So that's my reasoning behind it. I do actually have reasoning, did watch the games, I'm not just trying to hate on CLG. I'm not even that high on the LMS, which is kind of sad. <laughs> so then brings, anyway. brings in my opinion, which is not really high on LMS, it's just literally ignorant of LMS. I have not watched a single game, folks. So yeah, here's... same. I can't, I can't say that for you. You won't advance. In, in my opinion, there's a huge pair, like discrepancy between even know that the Yoli top teams and the, name the bottom <laughs> teams. <laughs> Yeah, they don't have Yoli as <laughs> They're just the flash rolls today, baby. All right. All right. Well, if we're gonna be that picky, then we're gonna say Chowgu Reapers every time we talk about this. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's only fair if we're gonna be specific here. They have Reapers in their game. All right. So I'm just gonna say CLG and Ku Tigers because even though I, from what I've heard, Flash Wolves is a great team, I still. Uh, Gonna go with my bias here and go with CLG simply because I've seen them play as a team, and even if they go with Huhi as a jungler, I think they'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know. It's a... Well, I mean, and also not to mention that Zion's actually working with Huhi directly to like get him caught up on jungle and how they use him stylistically. Yeah. Or did I say Zion? I think Zion. Zix. Yeah. Yeah, Zix. Okay. Sorry. Zion Zix. Zix, Zix and Xmithy. Zion knows yeah. all about the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my bad. You might even see a positive output just simply because of a lot of the uh, hate on Smithy as a jungler, which is which is honestly kind of like a, it's it's justified hate because like his team fighting is it like is kind of off a lot. I of think times. he did good in the playoffs. 
in, in, in the playoffs, yeah, she's done really well. Yeah, he did well in the finals. Yeah. So it's in, it's going to be interesting to see how, how the difference between him and who he and how they play as a team. Um, so we'll see how that works out. For Group B, though, this is where we all come in. Um, Fnatic, IG, AHQ, Cloud9. It's time. All right, let's go with Emily. You ended up with the last one, or you start out this time. Um, so I think IG is going to take the top spot. Um, here's where I actually think that in spite of the fact that HQ, I honestly believe them to be a poor matchup for Fnatic based on playstyle, just mm -hmm. because I think their early game is something that Fnatic has no, no answer for. Yeah. Um, but I actually think Fnatic will end up taking the second spot um, in this group. Uh, and again, it's really close between those two. Like, it wouldn't shock me to see HQ take that second spot. Um, I do think, and like, I hate... I hate picking IG. Like, even when they look so strong, I hate picking them because they're so inconsistent. And mm. this is why I didn't even pick them to make it out of the um, out of the, the regional qualifier because their top is so high and their, like, worst is so bad. Yeah, like, I'm going to have, like, a rant so about that one later watch. on. Yeah. But, um... I think that at, for the at the very least in groups, I think they'll be fine. Like, mm -hmm. especially considering that it's going to be on um, a new like the new patch, as you mentioned. Um, I think IG they they draft their drafts are typically super on point, um, and they adapt really well to new patches. I think Zatai has been playing really really well um, as of late, so I think. That, that will definitely take them through this group fairly easily, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kelsey, it's your time. It's your time to shine, Kelsey. All right. Um, yeah, I think Invictus Gaming is going to take first. Um, as was stated, they're good at adapting to new patches, so... The fact that groups A and B are in week one actually helps IG a lot because that doesn't give teams that much time to play competitive games on the patch and get better. Yeah. So IG will have the initial boost of the patch change the way they often do. And I also just think that it's it comes down to, for IG, it always hinges on whether or not Zatai and Rookie can get ahead. And if they do, then usually it's a win for them. And just the, I'm not necessarily saying that Zatai is better than Huni, but like the fact that Kakao is their jungler and is going to maximize the efficiency of those ganks. And when you think of Rainover, you think of Rainover as kind of uh, wandering around farming occasionally, counter ganking. He's not necessarily nearly as proactive as Kakao is, I think. Yeah. I think that will be something that can be seen. And Kakao is definitely like the more fearless jungler. If he has, if the team has direction and knows who they want to get ahead, he'll gank first more often than not. The question always is just like, will IG have one of those games where they decide to do nothing? Um, so that's the, the issue for me. Mm -hmm. um, bottom lane, of course, I think uh, Reckless and Yellow Star will probably do better, but. Uh, I don't think the team really needs Kid and Kitties to get ahead that much, and Kid and Kitties have had like really bad games, but not in a long time. Not since Kid came back from his um, break where he was recovering his mentality have IG really had like a game where their bottom lanes just get exploded by the enemy bottom lane, and they've faced some pretty tricky bottom lanes in this time too. So um, okay. I think they're pretty okay for that. Uh, in terms of the other two teams, wow, um, AHQ, I think, is a little bit overrated, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to do a whole lot. Um, I would you I say, just, like, what would make AHQ overrated? I, what about that team? necessarily... I think that they're extremely, they've been extremely meta reliant, and right now, like, Westor can get a buff, especially if people are playing Zed again, things like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the 
I'll get ahead. Especially if it's... They're just so... For me, when I look at AHQ, they just seem, like, very okay. Yeah. Like, it's, it's... There's nothing really that super stands out about them to me. And I don't think in this group that will be enough to get you through. Okay. That's how I put it. And I think Cloud9 is just going to be a disaster. So... <laughs> <laughs> Good point. All right. And going back to Emily, actually, about when we we're talking about Invictus Gaming's highs and lows, what do you think is causing their highs and lows? Do you think it's like, I think one of the suggestions that was made um, was a meta, like it was a, it was a meta-based issue between the team. Like, what what, uh, what do you think causes this issue with IG? Um, I think previously, I know like watching them during the season, some of it's meta, some of it I think is just a lot of, like I hate, I hate to bring this up as a reason, but they had until recently this really weird mentality around EDG and how like in the beginning of the season, in the beginning of this season, so like last season when they were figuring stuff out and they were super inconsistent, you could kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. They were trying to figure out their hybrid roster. Like obviously Kakao and Rookie had good communication. The rest of the team, they had Pokemon at first and then they uh, swapped to Zatai. And Zatai, for as well as he's playing now, really didn't start performing until the end of last season. So, um, or last, the, the first split. Yeah. So second split comes and they see EDG go to MSI and they're like, yeah, like we're going to do it. And Zatai is super motivated and they lose and they lose a really close game, but in their first set, but they lose. And the second game is not as good <laughs> and not as close. Yeah. And then they have all these weird internal issues with like one of their managers and their coach and Mafa doesn't want to draft for them because the team doesn't respect him mm -hmm. and kid has to take a sabbatical because his mentality isn't in a good place. And I actually think that was a good idea for him to be honest, because he's come back and he's looked a lot more like, I don't think he's ever going to light the world on fire, but he's looked fine. Like he's looked stable. He's been fine. Um, I still think kitties is the far weaker of the two. Um, and I think they're a team that relies a lot on their mentality as a group, and especially with a hybrid roster, I think that can be hard to, like, swing in one way or another, I guess, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I attribute a lot of their reasons for, like, doing poorly two things. One, I think we saw a lot of other rosters kind of figure it out, and so they just le like leapt ahead of Invictus in general. But then two, I think that's a huge part of it. Like, the team has these weird like, tilting issues, basically, where they sometimes are not in a good place, or they, for whatever reason, don't think they can do it, or the community pressure gets to them. And... I definitely don't think, like, the reason why I'm predicting them first, and I actually, like, can see uh, a very real possibility of them not even dropping a game in this group, and the reason why I say that is because I think right now they are in a really good place, and they're going to be on a new patch, and that's, like, it's basically going to be the perfect environment for this team. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if they have those kind of horrible games, it's going to be later on in the in the bracket stage for sure and it'll be because of something like that because something gets them or they can't figure it out or there's weird internal issues for whatever reason okay and do we all agree with that is that a is that a thing that ig is that and anyone can anyone really expand on that in the, in the idea that ig really has a, an issue with like mental cobwebs or at least had one and do you think that we've like they've conquered it and i guess that's maybe too much of a question maybe that we should hold off until group stages to find out but is that the consensus here? Well, I also just don't think that it's everyone in IG that has those itch issues. It's just a select few. Mm -hmm. And Kid was one of the prime examples. And when Kid doesn't have those, he's doing really well. Like, even right now, I think the Kid versus Reckless matchup is pretty close. And I think Kid's better. Like, yeah. I've always been a Kid apologist, though. So, <laughs> But I, I mean, I do think that Yellow Star is better than Kitties. So I guess that's yeah. one thing. But I do see IG topping the group because... Even in their matchup against Fnatic, and I have to plead ignorance on AHQ again, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 
uh, even in their even in their match against Fnatic, I don't really see them losing out in any position that's not. And and this is like kind of a stretch. Like people are gonna hate me for saying that about top lane, right? But this is a really good meta for Zetai, and he's incredibly motivated, which are two things that are really really good that are going for him. Yeah. And I do think that Kakao would be able to dismantle uh, Rainover in the jungle. And on top of that, like you know, you can't really rely on Fabivin to get his solo kills or whatever, because I highly doubt that's gonna happen on Rookie. But then again, it did happen on Faker, blah blah blah, whatever. But Rookie, Rookie's like looking insanely good coming out of the playoffs. So, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, on top of that, like was mentioned before, you have the really solid drafting. So overall, like IG, like if you just compare them, like factor by factor and lane by lane to the other teams, I do actually see them coming out of the group like on top pretty, pretty easily. But then I guess that also depends on how well Fnatic prepares. Yeah, I just individually though, I do think IG's better. Although, yeah, again, like people are gonna hate me. The people that only think Kakao and Rookie are the good players and everybody else's potatoes, but like, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's not the case. Hey, for Sorry. me, I think everyone on this like on this panel can agree. Okay, uh, Kelsey, you go for it first. Yeah, sir. I was just gonna say that I think that the thing again with Fnatic is part of their weaknesses are in the early game and just not knowing to react to some of those situations or wanting to play too conservatively. And when Invictus Gaming plays their game, it's like Zatai is just saying, oh, you don't expect us to dive your tower level three, or oh, (laughs) all this other stuff. And that's like where IG will take this like stupid advantage just because Zatai just doesn't, isn't afraid of things that he should be afraid of. So um, this is kind of where, but of course, Huni is really good at pushing off those dives, so can kind of consider that aspect as well. Yeah. And so I think that's just earlier to the point I was making is that I think that everyone can agree to the point that Zatai right now is the bi- is the biggest strength to IG. People are going to be saying, oh, Kakao, Kid. Well, mostly not Kid, actually. <laughs> Kakao and... <laughs> no one's going to be saying Kid. No one's yeah, no going to be saying Kid. No one's going to say Kid. Even and the rookie. dirty Kid apologist is not going to say Kid. <laughs> <laughs> But it's going to be Cacao and Rookie, Cacao and Rookie, Cacao and Rookie. But like people will find out very quickly that it's just going to be a Zatai show. Um, well, I actually think in this group specifically it is kind of Cacao and Rookie, though. It could be, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think over the course of the tournament you could say Zatai, yeah. But I just, yeah, I think that jungle and mid are actually really important for this group specifically, to mm-hmm. be honest. Yeah. Like if you look at all the teams and their impact, say... where their impacts come from. I think Rookie is the strongest player. Um, Kakao is the biggest X Factor. Like, is he just going to farm this game or what's he going to do? And yeah. Zatai is like the biggest unexpected punch in the face, I guess is how I would yeah, characterize that. Yeah, pretty much. That. It's always the unexpected punches <laughs> that knock you out. There we go. So, so for me, I, 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 <laughs> I would say IG Fnatic. And for me, the. the the one thing I'm going to say about this group and one the, the rant I was going to make about IG is the fact that I think a lot of people kind of said that IG's weaknesses or instability comes from the patch changes. And even though I think that's like a small part of it, it it's really, really like Emily nails it on the head, which is just their mentality as a team, the environment that they're in. And I think that if they lose a game, even though it doesn't matter how fucking close it was, like it's really solid game and it gets really close. But if they lose that game, like their mentality crumbles and that's like the biggest fear that i have for this team so I, like i would say that if they go up against fanatic as the first game of this group and if they lose it's something unlucky like that can i wouldn't even be surprised if ahq ends up taking second sp- spot because you don't know how invictus gaming can really pick it up after like a first loss so if they can pick it up, that's a big thing. That's always there's always a big question about Invictus game. And can they pick it up after a first loss, regardless of how good the first game was? But I think if they get any other team, if they get Cloud9, if they get AHQ first and like GG, they take second. <laughs> but if they it, it comes back to how their mentality comes after, let's say if they take on Fnatic for the first set. So that's my idea on that one. So group C time, baby. Um SKT eight H2K, EDG, Bangkok. Alright, this is going to be the easiest group of our lives, except for maybe, I feel like the biggest discussion will be between SKT and EDG, who takes first seat. So, uh, let's go to Drexen first, actually. What do you think about SKT versus EDG? Because I think, are we all in agreement that these two teams are going to be the ones coming out of the groups? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I think Bangkok Titans is going to win. <laughs> 
like. <laughs> this is actually kind of hard because I actually think a lot of this depends on how well Koro plays if he's starting. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's been really wildly inconsistent, and SKT gives a lot of their gold to Marin. So that might make the... Like, cause the here's the thing. Like, okay, you could put in Amazing J because carrying is, like, the... Um, like, carry, like, carry top laners are back in or whatever, but I think you get the same issue with EDG in the SKT matchup, no matter what. Just because if you are starting Amazing J and... and you know, he has the same issues where he can't really be as self-sufficient and does rely on jungler to help. And then you also have, um, um, wow, Koro. Wow, no, that was a weird go. brain fart. There you um, go. And you I mean, I'm Koro the one who said who, Kuro a long time ago. Who, 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 to, to meet the specifications where EDG plays best will also have to be self-sufficient against one of the most invested in top laners gold-wise. So either way, it's actually kind of... I'm actually almost leaning towards SKT because I think that Clear Love's going to get pulled away from helping Deft as much as he'd like, and he's going to have to help whatever top laner they bring and mid laner for this matchup. Um, maybe not mid so much as top, and I think that that's going to kind of throw off EDG. Um, like, EDG did look really, really strong in regionals, but at the same time, I actually think that's kind of a big factor because EDG looks a lot more comfortable when they can just use Pawn as a distracting factor. Koro can be self sufficient until he's required to teleport and team fight. And Deft is the primary focus, and then Clearlove can get Deft ahead. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put SKT slightly above EDG here, I think. Okay. All right. Emily, SKT or EDG? I actually think SKT is going to take the first spot, um, only because I think we've seen out of EDG um, the few times that they have not performed up to like the level expected of them. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of the times it is on a new patch or in a new environment, um, like you saw during the playoffs. But once they kind of figured stuff out more, even though the the patch was on five sixteen um, for the for the regionals, I thought they'd figured out stuff enough by then from at least like the Fiora gangplank and then clear love. Um, on Skarner, I thought was really interesting. But um, I think in terms of when EDG will, like, shine, it'll be later on down the road yeah. again. So in in this group specifically, I think SKT will take the top spot. Um, and then obviously I feel very badly for H2K and, and Bangkok Titans because they're, they're going to have a rough time of it yeah. in this group. And... I know everyone's looking forward to the Ryu, the Ryu Faker uh, rematch. So I'm kind of hoping that Ryu just locks in Zed anyway, and it's yeah. just like screw you. Like I'm gonna do this. It's not like we're gonna win this game anyway. So <laughs> might as well one v one Faker. Just right? the redemption uh, time. Yeah. Yeah. I love Ryu, so mm-hmm. I don't know. I, part of me hopes that happens. Um. But yeah. And. The only way I see EDG uh, taking first spot in this group, because I don't think it's impossible, um, is if when they meet up with SKT, Clear Love just absolutely destroys Bengi. And like yeah. my heart of hearts, I would love to see that too, because I'm not, as people might know, I'm not the biggest Bengi fan. Um, and I think that's actually entirely possible. So um, if if EDG takes the top spot, I think that's how it will happen. Mm-hmm. Um I do like Mike's point about Koro, though, because I think uh, across, so, like, from from MSI, and I don't think this is in any way, like, cl- like close to what, like, these are two different teams now. Yeah. One of the things that happened back then that, that's kind of really interesting to track both of them is that they went in separate directions. So SKT spent the majority of spring flopping back and forth between Easy Hoon and Faker, trying to figure out... Tom and Bengi, yeah. Um, yeah, and Tom, you, right? Tom and Bengi to some extent, but more, like, if you look back at their their games from mid lane, like, it's almost every other game, the entire, yeah. the entire yeah. um, season. And you see them setting up for this kind of, like, okay, if we want this style team, we're going to put Easy Hoon in, and if we want um, this style team, we're going to put Faker in, specifically around their team fighting, which isn't necessarily, in my opinion, SKT's strength. Um, and that's pretty much the thing that Easy Hoon brings with like his zoning mids and his very safe play style. Yeah. Um, it's that Bengi, it it allows them to team fight a little bit better, even though again, team fighting is still really not going to be like the thing you're looking for, like huge five v five fights out of this team. But they go into MSI, 
EDG beats them, and they beat them very convincingly through drafting. And I think at that point, SKT was like, all right, here's this team. And even though they're a hybrid roster, they stuck together. They're five people. We're going to stay. We're going to do that. And you've seen a lot fewer ro roster shifts from SKT uh, throughout summer. And they've been incredibly dominant in Korea. Um, and EDG took the opposite route, right? They swapped between Amazing J and Koro. And they swapped between Pawn and Baimi. And it's kind of how much you believe Sanshao and mystery illnesses and all that stuff and how yeah. much you think they're, they're actually just trying to shake up their roster, give experience or whatever. Um, whatever it is, I think when that team was reunited and now when they do play as five, they're definitely not as strong of a unit. So I think it might take some time in the stages to get there, which is another reason why I think, uh, I think they're going to take second here, but with, the capacity to overtake SKT later on that road. Yeah. Yeah. I also do think there's a possibility, like, I don't like them doing this, but they do have experience doing this, is pouring a lot of Clear Love's investment into Pawn to try to punish Faker being a little bit over aggressive in the mid lane and then trying to go from there. Obviously, not the ideal way of doing it, but it is something they could do in terms of how group stage is done, just because it's not like a, it's not like a series, so to speak. So mm. it could, that could kind of work as a cheese, I suppose. Okay. I don't know. Who did I not ask yet, actually, about SKT versus EDG? Hmm? Kelsey. Okay, Kelsey. I didn't forget <laughs> about you. <laughs> you literally just did. I think that's what actually just happened. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I agree that it's going to be SKT, and I think for similar reasons. My thing is, is that... I actually think one of the big factors is still going to be Wolf. And if SKT loses, it's going to be in part because of Wolf's inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. So I think well, we saw at MSI that that was a huge factor <laughs> um, between Mako and Wolf. Was a, Mako was really consistently good all series, and then Wolf had some issues where he was like made himself into a target in situations where he probably shouldn't have been as obvious a target. Yeah. I, w I will say that like focusing mid I think is going to be the red herring and mm -hmm. since EDG isn't naturally suited for gang's top like Koro gets almost no love at all yeah. and Marin I think is I'm not going to say tilted but if Marin is ahead he'll do well but if he's not ahead he does not have a good time like at all um, so I think a lot of We've seen a lot more top lane ganks and stuff in SKT games, and that's been part of their adjustment in summer. So I think that in the past at MSI, it was okay to just 1v1 destroy Marin and set him behind, but I don't think that will happen in this case. I think we're going to see a lot more top lane ganks towards Marin, which will not be good if EDG doesn't adapt, and I don't think they'll adapt right away. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I agree that EDG is going to be more of a ramp-up team in this instance one other factor i will say is that some of the the top mid swapping i think has actually made clear love a stronger jungler individually and there were instances where he just became like the hard carry that the team needed or he became much more fundamental as a backbone and there are good good aspects to that and bad aspects to that so i would like to see how that plays out yeah i do think that the patch changes have done a lot for EDG in a sense that I think that it's really helped out their pick bans because it's generally when teams have gone against them I thought that you ban out their main strength of a strategy and you do well like for instance like if you give Pawn Twisted Fate that's like oh well you know I feel like Pawn gets so much attention that he can really look outside of the laning phase for a lot of it he doesn't have to think about how well he like how the specific matchups in the, in the laning phase works out so like he gets a lot of freedom in picking like poor matchups like Cassidy or even if you go farther back you get like kind of random picks that he kind of it feels like troll matches in a sense so I do think that if the bands go as they have gone in 5.16 I think it was uh, in China or is it 5. Point? I don't even remember anymore I'm just gonna no, yeah it was 5.16 okay, it was 5.16 yeah if the bands remain the same then I think that if they do end up getting like a really strong pick for a pawn let's say even LeBlanc 
like give him LeBlanc, give him uh, Twisted Fate, and I think that actually ends up going in favor of EDG. So in that sense, I think EDG will. I think they can definitely take the first game of the series. I'm not sure about the second one, but I'm just gonna say EDG takes the series. I think it's gonna be EDG SKT. It's gonna be really close games. Um, but I think a lot of the favors is gonna go on EDG just because of the pawn matchup. I think in every other lane, I think I'd, I would favor SK. I mean, at EDG's bot lane, I'd favor SKT's top lane and probably jungle just because of the synergy. I, I, even though like I love Clear Love, but I think um, and I think Clear Love is the better jungler. But I think his attention is going to be. They're like they they're going to have like both teams are going to have different like um, focuses, and I think it's going to be a lot more efficient with the EAG. That's just a random prediction, though. I have no idea what's going on. Five point eighteen, so all that can go up in the air. <clears throat> the fun thing is that none of us do, so mentioned. all of yeah. this can be wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't we haven't mentioned Mordecai there. Oh so. my god! Oh my god. Let's Who not. Is who is the best Mordekaiser player? <laughs> I'm like really tempted in thinking that Mordekaiser is a horrible champion and then you forget he has a pet dragon and then you're like, okay, well, I don't know anymore. You kind of just lose a free tower if you ever get to that. So, ah, that champion, please, somebody do something about it. Um, okay, group, group D time. I'm hoping they do. <laughs> group D for death. I love this one. It's very fitting. <laughs> Um, so, LGD, KT Rolster, uh, that one's for you, Emily, KT Rolster in the same group as LGD, and then of course, Origin and Team Solo mid. Damn, um, let's go with Drexen, I don't know, I don't know, no, 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 screw that, screw that, Kelsey, I haven't actually started. Wow, <laughs> <you're> fucking robbed. <laughs> I haven't started with Kelsey, I'm pretty sure, so I have to start with her at least once. That's fine, sure. Um, Okay, who takes a... Uh, yeah, go for it. So, I think it's pretty... I don't know if anyone will debate that LGD is getting out first. Mm -hmm. uh, if you will, I guess you can do that in your own section. <laughs> um, I think LGD will get out first. They push lane sidelines really well. They can compensate for some of KT's early aggressive all-ins. I don't really see Origin... A, a part in the game where Origin really beats LGD. Mm -hmm. Most of their lanes will just get a pretty good lead on them. Acorn, I mean, depending on where the jungle pressure goes, like Acorn versus Soaz could actually be an interesting matchup, depending. Um, but I think that just because, again, like EDG, I don't think jungle pressure really ever goes top. Yeah. Or I suppose in LGD's case, you don't call it jungle pressure; you call it roam pressure. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, it's mostly PYL. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so sad. Uh, it's true. Uh, roam pressure doesn't really ever go top. Um. So, but they're because of the, how good they are at pressuring waves. Like no matter, they can really bully KT into making dumb decisions, even if KT get like early, get early leads. So. Mm -hmm. See it being LGD then KT because they're really strong early, but I actually think the Origin versus KT matchup isn't super one-sided. Because I do think Origin do make some a lot of early game mistakes, so they don't foresee a lot of stuff that happens in the early game. But I think KT has this period where they just are not sure what they're doing, and Origin have shown that they can take advantage of some of those periods um, yeah. in the mid game. So. Um, I can kind of see this being like 1-1 and then KT win the tiebreaker, depending on how the rest of the matches go. Yeah. And then um, Origin will be next, and then the last place team is TSM, who I don't see actually winning a single game this entire group, so... Yeah. Uh, fun time. If they somehow upset LGD, we could just say LGD's experimenting and then upset every fan base on the planet, it's gonna be great. <laughs> Yeah, Kelsey, you can't awesome. say that about oh, you can't say that about TSM not making out of groups. I'm pretty sure the members of TSM but would be quite unhappy of you really making that analysis. It's a reference to the balls thing, think anyways. That the, it's gonna the support matchup is the support matchup has me really excited about this group because I think mm -hmm. most of these supports, even Les Boy, if you go back in time, you know, right now Les Boy's not doing so well, but if you went back to spring, Les Boy was pretty good. So, the support matchups are, are pretty awesome. Um, oh, yeah, I think all PYLs, Pickaboo, and Mithy like, are all going to be really fun to watch. So, I'm excited for that in this group. That's pretty fun. 
All right, Emily, this is your time to shine. Hey, um, I also think it's going to be LGB and KT, but once again, and honestly, just like Group A, it's really close for that second spot. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I do think KT is going to win out is honestly for a lot of similar reasons why I'm not super high on like people who say that pain gaming might be able to make it out of groups. Um, I think Origin are a good team. I think they are smart. Um, I think they showed a lot of really good like map decisions, especially in that one first game against Fnatic. Um, however, where what I think they lack is just overall experience. I'm not talking about having experienced players. Yeah. I'm talking about looking, going in a game and experiencing certain things happening to you over and over and over and learning how to adapt to that. And I think even though KT has tremendous issues, like, and, and I know, like, because I'm a fan of KT, so something that you should realize, I guess, about... Me talking about KT is I absolutely love that team, but what happens when I love a team is that I'm usually very, very harsh on them. Yeah. And KT really frustrates me sometimes when they pick certain compositions and then do something completely unintuitive that counters exactly what that composition is supposed to do in the mid game. Mm -hmm. And they, they've done it multiple times. They've shown that while they can accrue these early leads, it's really difficult for them to make the correct decisions occasionally and close games out. Um, and that's definitely their biggest weakness. Um, if you can keep Pickaboo in lane too, that makes a huge difference because once again, Score has a lot of experience as a player, but not a lot of experience as a jungler. Yeah. So just in terms of how to, again, react to certain situations within the game, I think that's definitely where he's lacking. Um, but in terms of the Origin KT matchup, I just think that KT, sheerly based on the fact that they're in a stronger region than Europe, and they additionally have played more games... Um, I think that they'll be able to get those early leads, and I don't think Origin will know how to quite how to punish them for their mid game mistakes, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's a and fair that's point, honestly yeah. just based on amount of games played, a lot of stuff, uh, just uh, like in game experience, basically, as a team. Like, KT has that, um, and the only way I see Origin taking second place is if they somehow manage to lock Pickaboo up and then get somehow get an, a lead early on KT, which is actually something that's really difficult to do. Um, and not many teams have been able to do that this year. So Yeah. Or this split, rather, not this year. Okay. All right. So we're getting a lot of KT over... Origins. Drexen, how do you feel about this? Are you in line um, with this? Yeah, I'm pretty in line with second place being close, but I think the uh, like first place isn't even like close. Yeah. Like it's, no, it's not. It's, it's <laughs> like LG is like way better than KT. And actually what's funny is um, I think that their jungle support uh, duo kind of operate the same way between both of these teams because I think to make up for a lot of uh, TBQ's issues that well not maybe not so much just PYL but also Godway um, uh, roam around a lot so that there's actually pressure being applied uh, similar to how score moves around with Pickaboo mm -hmm. uh, but other than that I'm pr I think outside I mean even top lane I'm pretty sure that LGD is just better in every position and I think LGD I think in this group that TBQ is actually not a bad jungler at all like he might actually be the best jungler in this group which is really weird or, like, top two, at least. Yeah, the jungle matchup it's like, is actually super close across the board. Like, yeah. you have TBQ, amazing, score. Yeah. Like, I actually think you could make a legitimate last case. Centaurin. 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 Okay, Centaurin. Centaurin. Okay, Centaurin sucks. Like, I think but the other ones. <laughs> the other ones are pretty close. You can make a legitimate <laughs> case for TBQ edging out, like, maybe not a lot, but slightly is the best jungler in this group, which is scary. So when LGD's, like, weakest <laughs> asset is, is that... And that might be the best. Like, there's no chance for other teams. Yeah, it's not um, good. But, yeah. Um, KT versus... I think KT versus Origin will actually be an interesting match, as others have said, and I'm kind of parroting, just because I think that So As versus Someday could be fun 
if both of them show up, which I think Soez has more consistency issues. Uh, sorry, consistency issues than someday does, but for the most part, it's a meta that's really suiting for him, and it's really fun to see him back and like kind of having that carry potential. Um, and yeah, most you guys mostly covered most of it, so I'm not going to go ahead and parrot every opinion just because I agree with most of you guys. But I do, I do think that the support matchups are actually going to be the most fun to watch. Okay, for sure. But yeah, LGD, LGD, like way on top with like a a bunch of greater than signs, and then like KT, KT like one, one greater, greater signs, than an yeah. origin, and then like yeah. one greater than TSM. <laughs> so, <laughs> and actually, you know, as much as much as like everyone rips on TSM, I actually hope that they their preparation for Worlds makes it so they're not like really really horrible. Like I actually I actually do want them to do well. So I, I want, want them to, to have be, competitive I, games. And I think that, I want yeah. I want yeah. I want two through four to be a competitive like matchup. I want all, those three positions to actually compete. If they yeah. be L G D, I won't even be mad. You know? Oh, that'll be L G D next round. <laughs> there we go. We're already settled. Like this this that's the that's the one statement that will piss off every fan base on the planet. It has so yeah. much power to it. <laughs> we have that TSM, we have that tilting, you're tilting summoning insight and, <laughs> and like the Chinese fans will obviously think it's just absurd too but it's great it, it works it's, it's awesome. beautiful uh, so I think I'm going to be I'm going to go on a different note here because I, I actually think that even of course LGD will take first but I think Origin is going to take second and the reason is simply that although I do think that KT is a team that is stronger I think they're I think they're a stronger unit and I think they have stronger players like from score and pickaboo just simply off of that alone I think they're and someday of course they have stronger players and I do think they have a stronger early game too um, and they do I, I, from what I've seen I'm not sure if that's just the composition they love to run is that they do have kind of like a snowball -y comp composition from time to time um, mostly in the top lane from someday or they'll have it from I think it's actually just I can't even remember the games. Sad face. But yeah. It's usually it's usually someday. Like some mm -hmm. and this is a really good meta for him too. I yeah. will say that. Like him him and Soaz are are both like really happy campers mm -hmm. with, with the current meta. But, or I mean what we presume again, like we presume it's gonna still be, especially with like juggernauts, I don't even know how that's gonna affect like Gar like now. Yeah, but, no yeah. Idea. If 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 carry tops are still a thing, both of these teams are really happy about it. I do think team wise, though, I think both teams have kind of like the same weaknesses that we mentioned in terms of like just kind of veering off in in, in the mid game. But I do want to say that I think that the mid lane dynamic has actually changed pretty frequent, like by quite a bit um, in the past few patches. Um, a couple of patches ago, it was like you just pick Victor and you win. Blind picking was so easy for mid lane. It was something that you can you, you do it consistently. You do it first pick, and you would always have you would have a safe lane, and you would have a strong like a stupidly strong team fight. Um, but recently, it seems like the strongest mid laner is just literally ones you counter pick. So like for instance, right now the counter the player like the powerhouse is like Diana, and Victor seems to not be having a good day in these carry top lane meta where you can just like you have multiple carry threats just diving in on Victor beforehand it was like okay it felt a lot more survivable like he would be able to put down his uh his zoning tool my oh, god I forgot his I forgot the name of it already but he'd be able to put down his zoning tool and if he keeps his distance from like a, the two carries that were available then he would you'd be fine. But now that there are more dot that there's a larger dive threat, he just gets destroyed really quickly. I think that's the that's that. So I'm not saying that Victor is bad, but I think that if Diane is on the field, which I think is gonna be a thing, and Xpeke does have like a really strong he has like a weak champion pool, but I think when it comes in terms of like counter picking, I think his counter picking pool is strong. So on that alone, I think they'll edge it out. It's kind of like 50-50, and I'm kind of biased in the sense that I, maybe I do want a little bit of o OG winning. <laughs> so that's probably a little bit of a sad thing right there, but 
I think I think that's I think that's gonna play a little bit of factor. But in the end of the day, I wouldn't be surprised if Ku wins it. I mean, <laughs> if KT wow. wins it, KT wins it, and I think it will be kind of a an upset if Origin wins. But that's just that's just how best of ones will work. So, uh, all right. Does anyone agree with that? How's I don't know. Obviously not, because I literally just like said a counterpoint to all <laughs> everyone else saying KT won. I mean, so. I think TL, that's, that's TLDR. Uh, Origin wins because Diana, even though they shouldn't win. Yep. <laughs> yep. I think <laughs> I'm kind of confused at that only because I think that. I don't know. Uh, are you just saying that, like, Xpeke is better than Nagane? I am not impressed with yeah. Nagane. <laughs> okay. I am not impressed with him. I think Xpeke is a stronger player. I've been unimpressed with both of them. I yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, around, a, that's, like, that's a good throughout point. Throughout both of their playoff runs. But I think um, Nagane is better in terms of team fighting mm -hmm. and specifically, like, cooldown and ult usage in team fighting, which is okay. actually something that. Peke, like, and I'm probably slightly, I guess, slightly biased against him because of his Azir play during the, uh, like, um, Holy. oh my gosh, they're fanatics at, like, a mm. set part. but, um, and I'm not talking about, like, oh man, Peke is a terrible Azir, no, what I'm saying is, if you play Azir, you want to focus on his zoning potential in team fights yeah. for either setting up specific skirmishes in your favor or turning around a five v five team fight using it for counter engage, using it for engage, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I thought Xpeke actually did a really poor job of that, I and agree. Yeah. it's indicative of how he has been in team fights. Where I honestly can't say the same thing about Nagane, and I don't think Nagane is like the best mid laner either. Like yeah. he's whatever, he's serviceable, right? But the thing he bring he does bring to KT is that he's actually a fairly good initiator. Um, when he did well in spring, it was on like Lissandra. Um, even when KT was like absolutely terrible, just because he could initiate and zone. And I think um, that's actually what he's good at, and that's why I'd slightly put him ahead of Xpeke. So I thought that was interesting that you picked that matchup. That's See, awesome. that's, so, like, that's I disagree, yeah. But my See, and that's where I agree with you in the sense that I don't think that Xpeke has been playing well in terms of like having um, these mage kind of control mage picks, like the Victors, the Zeers. He has never really been that. I wouldn't even say I don't even I don't think he has been that good as a player when it comes to when it comes to these picks. I feel like he's always been kind of like an assassin player. And if he if he doesn't get those assassins, then he's kind of like he just kind of blends in with the rest of the, the crowd essentially. And I think that this meta, it's going to be hard to really point out if it's going to completely head in this direction. Because you see the LeBlancs, you see the Zeds, uh, the Zed buff specifically. And you see, he, he still plays Fizz, even though I think the, ner the nerf that came down to his physical attack is actually just like an all-around nerf <laughs> to like everything about that champion. So he's probably not going to see much play on that sense. But I do think that if he gets his picks, if he gets the counter picks, I think he will be able to take the matchup fairly easily but I don't know like there's another there are like there are two sides of the maps like surrounding him too so like I don't I doubt that if they get the lane swaps that he'll be allowed to do anything with Scorn Pickaboo uh, so sadness uh yeah uh okay I think we just covered every point of that actually uh is there anything else that we should mention hmm I think that was we're pretty. We're going to talk about. Hmm. I we're going to talk about IG and EGD briefly because next episode is going to be about LGD. Oh right, right. Let's talk about IG and EGD. So, okay. All we right. We can just do like what we did last time, which was if you're a Western team, how would you beat these teams? Okay. So let's start with. Do you want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. that so we, let's, let's go with IG. Um, if you're a Western team, let's say Fnatic. Uh. Who else is? I'm gonna have to quickly check who else is in that group set. Cloud9, there we go, an AH game. Um, so if you're a team going up against, in the, going in that group, what is your plan to dismantle Invictus Gaming? Let's go with Emily. Um, if you are Fnatic, mm -hmm. I think you want to somehow make sure that 
cacao is on a farming jungler so you don't for like you don't see him for the first part mm -hmm. so not that like it's it's really difficult to remove cacao from the game and i still think that you um, are going to have to admit that Cacao is a better jungler than Rainover. Mm -hmm. But in terms of keeping him out of the game long enough, I think what you'd want to do is make sure that in the draft you try to take away um, more aggressive early game junglers so he can't provide as much early pressure for IG, um, which kind of takes a little bit of pressure off of you because your early game isn't fantastic anyway. Um, and then you're going to have to have who need deal with the tie in the top lane. And I'm sure them will get a lot of crap for this because a lot of people don't like Zatai um, and absolutely love Huni. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually think Zatai wins that, especially the way he's been playing recently. Yeah. So you're going to have to say, hey Huni, we're gonna need you to at least <laughs> hold off Zatai because where we're gonna focus is bot lane and we're gonna try to snowball that advantage as hard as possible. Um, to make sure that, um, like, like mid and bot lane, you want to keep Kitten Kitties completely out of it. And then you also want to try to make sure that Rookie doesn't get a lot of farm either, which would require, and even though I haven't particularly loved Rainovers at least, it'll require him to play a jungler that can provide a lot of early pressure. Like, I don't even, would Olaf even work in this situation? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But, like, it, basically, you have to have Rainover attacking the lanes from the get-go, remove Cacao from helping out his lanes, um, and then try to keep Rookie from getting farm and try to accrue such an advantage in the bot lane that when you guys group up in team fight, you won't, like, Zatai's advantage won't mean as much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Kelsey, how would you attack him? So, I agree on the, the Zatai point, Zatai being really kind of a, a scary threat with how he's playing right now, but I don't think he'll carry a game by himself. Like, that's my thing with Zatai, is mm -hmm. that I think that he's really good at, like, the 1-4, and he'll do all this crazy shit, but really just pressure rookie. Like, honestly, that's still, for me, the thing, because I think bottom lane is self-sufficient enough on Fnatic that you can get away with... Fanatic pressuring bottom lane by themselves and then just try to gank mid as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and then top, almost just like ignore Zatai. Like try to split even and try to be fine. And I think Kumi can probably do that okay. And then like when it when it comes to the 1-4, the I think both of these teams are actually really good at 1-4. And so that'll be a really interesting development to see come from mid to late game, but as long as you focus as much effort as possible on shutting down Rookie, I don't think Zatai can carry on his own. So that would be my advice there. Is I also, of course, agree with like trying to get Kakao on a, a more farm oriented jungle pick. Except Gragas, because... Yeah, you yeah, don't want okay. Kakao on Gragas, because he just will... <laughs> it doesn't matter, he'll just turn all the team fights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Drexen. What's your take on yeah, this? Yeah, I more or less agree. I also think it's a good idea to force yourself into a 2v2 situation against Kid and Kitties and kind of abuse Kitty's weak laning. Um, and on top of that, I think that even more so than versus other things, I think proper warding is really, really important. And I think even if you have to play somewhat conservatively, as long as everything you do is smart and not like overzealous and just guessing, then that's fine. I think that's the way to beat IG because if you can neutralize Kakao from getting ahead early, that takes away a lot of the threat of IG. Um, and if you're playing a safer mid laner that just won't die to Rookie, th that's also a thing as well. And not to mention the wards won't only stop the snowball from Kakao, but proper warding will also make it so it's a lot easier to spot Zatai if he does go for the 1-4 split, and it'll stop him from solo taking the towers all on his own. So. Alright. Alright. That's, uh, that's actually pretty, yeah, okay. I agree with all of that, which makes it sad because you guys have all pretty much all covered it. There's nothing really I can put out there. Uh, Wait, how well, does Do you think they should nine? focus bottom or mid, Raz? Hmm? Yeah. I think or they should focus. Can at, talk about how, how do you, them. 
They should no, really I, just, I was just doing it generally. <laughs> I just think that they should vote focus. How does Client 9 beat them? I think they focus mid. They don't. A C9 won't do anything. Blood but... sacrifices. <laughs> Unless if, like, for Here's whatever reason. Here's an interesting thing. I... Go on. Here's an interesting thing I noticed while playing with my gold distributions. Because, you know, I do that in my quiet little corner. Putting in numbers and things and whatever. Yeah. Um, but... I, so of course, obviously, Clear Love is the jungler with the highest percentage of team gold earned, right, over the course of the split. Yeah. But I was looking, and I expected the next one to be Cacao, because obviously, like China, you have the carry junglers, whatever. Yeah. It's high. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's high. He has the second most. Oh my God! Please help. And it makes sense. He plays like. He plays like so the Shivana and everything Shivana, else. And the Kazix, yeah. Literally just like farming all the time. He just time. plays because, yeah, Kazix and Shivana. Yeah, so. So it's movie. like actually really funny to think of that. <laughs> so <laughs> for me, that, that speaks a lot of Cloud, to Cloud Knight's problems, though, because it's like if you're putting all of your gold into high. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why I mean, are it's you not something that? they haven't done before. <laughs> unless that's what you're. Unless that's what you're... Uh, but it's like, it's a difference. It's You see the difference in how the gold really comes through. Because, for instance, you know that Clear Love is getting the, that gold from just, like, the pressure that he puts on the map. He'll take the kills in the ganks that he goes for. But High is literally not even going for that pressure. He just he just farms. And so that's... Like, I don't think that's going to work against any really good team. Yeah. If you let him get the gold, it doesn't yeah. really fucking matter if you play proper late game. And if you do get the let him get the gold, then, I mean, that should have been something that should be stopped anyway. Because he's not putting pressure anywhere, so... Yeah. So Cloud9 is fucked. I think everybody agrees with that. Um, <sighs> and just to hammer in certain points, because I know there was a bit of drama last night, I'm just going to hammer this in, because this is like my bit of a rant of why Cloud9 is fucked, is they have good lanes from the bottom line. They, like Sneaky and Lamination are great. Great. They, they can stand on their own. Stop fucking playing Karma, but they can stand on their own. Incarnation is a great mid laner. He needs more pressure in the lane, but you know what? He's a great mid laner. That's fine. High, literally. Sorry, I know that High has High has a really good history with jungling in NA, like a wide history from Orbit and all that, Quantic. But you know what? That's the past. That's the past. Different meta. You're coming in. You're playing like farm junglers with no pressure on the map. That's not like, like literally cannot stand. That he is not a good jungler. That is a fact. And then to hammer in a point that happened last night. Balls, people are going to say he's in a slump. But how long do you have to play poorly to be in a slump? I think that's a real question here. How long do you have to consistently be playing poorly to be slumping? Like, do we have a time frame? Is there an official time frame for that? But, like, look at the top laners in this group. Like, I'm mm. not as high as Huni on... Uh, uh, I'm not as high on Huni as <laughs> other people are. Yeah. But he's going to beat Balls. The tie is... It's not going to be pretty, people, yeah. like, and Ziv is also, no, it's, it's not looking good for Balls in this group, yep. to be quite honest. Yep. Balls will not stand on the same fucking platform as these top laners, 100%. Anyone who can say differently is a Cloud9 fanboy, <laughs> I don't, or like me. Don't know who Ziv is. Or sneaky slash incarnation. Yeah, that, that works too. Yeah, that. And it's like if if that team Ziv succeeds, is probably hands down. Hands down what? Ziv is like hands down best top in Taiwan. Okay. Really yeah. All right. Good information for balls to know when he gets fucked. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, like like that's the thing. Like people don't understand. Like in my opinion, watching these three top laners that aren't balls, like Huni is the worst of the three. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying the he's worst, bad. Sorry. I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. comparatively, Huni is the worst of these three top laners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which gives you a good idea of, like, how strong Group B's top lane shit, like, it's, it's not going to be a good time yeah. for him yeah. at all. So if anyone's going to be, like, the only way Cloud9 gets through this group is off the back of whatever snowballing composition they throw around uh, sneaky getting Draven, and if he gets a kill, then I don't know. He might be better than Civ. I don't know. Like, I think Civ is good and well-rounded, but uh, it's hard. It's okay. Hard. Okay. We'll move on. That's gonna be the real focus here. How hard does 
uh, balls get fucked, and how's how good is Ziv and Huni in comparison to everyone else? So that's gonna be a it's gonna be a nice <laughs> end to that group. So, <laughs> so. Hey, we'll just give him like the sympathy rumble every game. <laughs> sympathy, just don't die. I feel like that's even worse. <laughs> like you give him rumble. Oh, what can you even do at that Ryan. point, though? Uh, All right, and then of course, uh, last team on the on the table here is LGD. Okay. EDG. EDG. Yeah, yeah. Then we, LGD episode. Oh yeah, EDG. Okay, I have, we, of course we have to save the best for last. Okay. EDG, how do you stop this monster if you are the team named <laughs> H2K? H2K. <laughs> oh Jesus. Oh. <laughs> okay, if you are H2K. Why are you Betten laughing? <laughs> Is Betan Yuck oh, a good answer? No, okay, no. But, okay, if you're SKT, how do you deal with EDG? What is the answer to this team? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you're H2K, like, if you are the one Western team in Group C, which is H2K, like, it's fine. Like, Ryu and Pawn, whatever, they yeah. can duke it out in the mid lane. Um,. But the jungle discrepancy here is so unfortunate. Is oh my gosh! Mm. <laughs> like I don't even know how to describe the massive difference in in what in how this jungle matchup works because basically H two K is the poor man's L G D where the rest of their team is trying to make up for the fact that their jungle apply, jungler applies absolutely no pressure and also makes really weird decisions. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't see what's stopping Clear Love from just absolutely destroying him. Um, oh, it's not even gonna stop like anyone else on that team, like. <laughs> yeah, just that matchup alone. Okay. Mako so is just gonna walk in there. Like, yeah. Um, My favorite thing is about watching like EDG games when we talk about jungle matchups is that like Clear Love gets a lot of kills, right? And he usually gets them from lane, or sometimes he'll get it from solo killing the jungle. But he doesn't really invade that much. Like usually when he gets solo kills, it's either because he's like invading a little bit to clear vision, and yeah. the enemy jungle tries to attack him and push him out, or it's because he's uh, getting invaded on, and he just like turns around and heads up the sevens up. It's like why are you messing with that? Like yeah. you know how this is gonna turn out. Yeah. Well, I'm like if we were. But yeah, so it's just for me. So if you're talking about like. Lulex is the kind of player who seems like he thinks that he's like can get away with some of this stuff, so he makes a lot of the daring moves. So I can almost see in this H2K matchup of, like where Lulex says, you know what, Clear Love is hot shit, I'm just going to shut him down right away. And he goes in, and then like they collapse and just kill him. Like I can see something like that happening. So. It can happen. I agree with that. <laughs> he thinks it's a time so, to make a name for himself, and he just gets like <laughs> I think the people. Well, that's like the kind of player that Lulek seems to be. Yeah. Uh, Emily. People who were watching the Snake EDG series oh. and saying how, oh my gosh, how can this happen? Yeah. The EDG is so far ahead. Yeah, you haven't seen nothing until you see EDG H2K oh. or EDG B Bangkok Titans. I'm so it's looking forward be... to that match, dude. That's gonna be so. That's gonna be the most like, hilarious. I, I Fourteen no minute inhib. We yeah. should take bets on how fast to take the first inhib inhibitor when it starts. <laughs> oh, we should actually. EDG BKT. Oh god. EDG BKT is gonna be even worse because Bangkok Titans just like to fight all the time. Like they don't choose yeah. when to fight. Like they yeah. don't choose advantageous terrain. They don't choose objectives to fight over, and. You don't know how it's sad that makes like, me. <laughs> it's going to be like, oh man, like remember when Korn decided it was a really good idea? <laughs> Just solo invade level. Yeah, no. like that's how I... this game going. He was playing Echo that game, right? Yeah, he was. Kind of reminds me. Yeah, G4 will just, like, actually, he'll play Echo. He'll just counterpick yeah. every time, and then he'll play extremely <laughs> aggressively in the lane with that counterpick. He's going to get destroyed. I'm sorry. That's just not going to be a thing he can do. <sighs> oh. it, with then, it's like, Pawn will just pick whatever he wants. Yeah. And just dumpster him with it. I'm just ready for his, like, spring split troll picks. He's like, I'm going to play Lux this game. Oh, uh, Vagar, <laughs> here we go. Uh. Okay. 
Hey, Lux got buffed, so you know me. Okay, maybe. so now that we've talked about how H2K... Now that we've talked about how H2K and BKT are going to get demolished... So right? how does Let's e talk about how H2K can feasibly beat EDG. Alright, <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay. Is that even possible? I think what you'd have to do <laughs> is... I'm actually so possible, confused. But... I th okay. But like, yeah. okay, if we think about, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to think about how Unlimited Potential beat EVG. Oh Even my god. Even though, obviously, well, no, they beat them with their Dude, Unlimited yeah. Potential could go into Group A yeah, and come out top two. Yeah, they're the only team, <laughs> but I'm saying, three playoffs, they're the only point. team in the regular season to have beaten EVG's main yeah, lineup. My point so. is that they studied EVG, and they came up with this game plan, and I yeah. think game plan is solid. Whether H2K can actually execute it, is not something I have confidence that they can do. But um, in terms of like targeting clear love through global pressure, um, so like putting Ryu on like a TF and then somehow having like Kasing is gonna have to get really deep vision down in order to keep track of clear love. That's like the only conceivable way. Like you yeah. use that that UP oh, blueprint. See, this is good. This is good. See, it, that's, that's, that's the thing, though. The H2K's strongest players are their their top, their uh, mid, and their support. So they can replicate the same type of strategy, and they can add in, like, the TP. Because I actually think Odo's strength is the top laner in the region. He's, he's really good at, like, TP re-engages and TP flanks. So, so yeah, like, they, could, they could try to... And put, like, they just have to be... A dynamic team and that's the weird that's like the hard thing to really ask for this team because they do have exactly what they need to do well like they have Kassin they have Odwane they don't even need Lulix and they have Ryu like they have literally like great players in every lane and this like in the support of players to really do something in the early game but the reason why UP did so well was because they and the reason why LGD has always done so well with against EDG is that they've draw, like they were always able to be dynamic in the early game and commit to the skirmishes that they went for, and so you saw the supports roaming cross map at perfect times. Either they roam mid or they roam top, or they're always in a position in which they're they say fuck the lanes. Essentially, is what they're saying is that they can always act on the on the spot, saying okay we. We can leave you, Yarnin, to this lane here, and I'm gonna go to this top lane because of the wave is pushing in. You know, like they're able to act while the game is going on. They're, the the idea of a laning phase is dynamic to like EDG, LGD, UP. But why I think H2K will get fucked is because I think that for them, laning phase is very linear. It's a linear process for them. They and if the the the, the farthest they can go with that is like lane swap. Hey, lane swap. And then they, they take their support and they go mid lane or something. They take their, like, they take three people if they're lane swapping and they try and gank mid lane. And that's, I feel like that's the biggest thing with like H2K or just, forgot, I feel like Europe as a region. It's just that they kind of, they're, yeah. they're, they feel. Laning phase is extremely linear, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's very, they very linear. They don't, they, to laning phase. Yeah. And so, like, I remember I mean, the entire. How... Yeah, go on, go on. Oh no, I was just going to say, like, that's how, that's why the matchup is so important for people who are reevaluating, like, the context of Kaboom Alliance, because mm -hmm. that's actually what happened, is yeah. the overvaluing of the laning phase, that's what Kaboom was able to take advantage of. And I think, like, the greatest question that has been asked, and honestly answered, was when people were like, well, why does China play Kassadin, or why does China have this composition that's, like, so 80 AD focus, like they'll have a complete AD composition. It's like, oh man, you just build armor, and then people just forget that they don't have, they don't give you the time to build armor. Giving people the time to, like, let's say if they play Cassidy and to push in their tower, they don't give you time. They don't say, here's a free period in this game called a laning phase, where nothing happens and you can just go one v one or be or like the entire, the entire like, uh Remember, I think the greatest one is like when people like Forgiven or something say, yo, they just bring their jungler here. Yeah, bring your jungler here 24-7, blah, 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 you know, they, they complain about it. Like, that's something that's not supposed to be expected. Like, I don't, I don't know. 
that's my little rant on like the West, rest, rest when it comes to laning phase and how they take it. Like as if that's supposed to be something that's like a, a little treaty, the laning phase treaty, I'll call it. Like, <laughs> anyways. So like I think it's the opposite is. The, yeah, as in like lane swap scenarios, right? Yeah. And this is the thing that I don't like about Western lane swap scenarios, where they just like take your tower as soon as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was actually looking at the the statistics, and in LPL, the first tower falls later on average in yeah. lane swap scenarios because mm -hmm. they're holding up that lane to get like the eighty carry farm, and all, and they're taking more opportunities to roam, right? Mm -hmm. and that's the key part where they have their support and their mid laner and their top laner like all roaming, and they're like, yay. Wave phase <laughs> equals all room. All, yeah, leaving your AD to Let's farm go. Let's and have a party. taking over the map. Yeah. yeah. So and I just then yeah. also that's also why their late games are so devastating because then they'll also come out with like an AD carry with two extra items or something on someone else and then it's like oh this is an AD carry meta you say too bad I don't believe that. <laughs> too bad. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just wait until death's mortar kind of comes like out. This is true. And so like, <laughs> that's gonna be the like people talk about. Oh man, you know, going into world, the 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 meta will just be linear. Every team will just be trying to understand the same meta. Like there's there's gonna there are stupid comments out there of like Western pros coming out and saying, man, it's just about who understands the meta coming in there. Like it, it as if it's a it's the same fucking thing for everybody. No. Everybody understands it differently. Everybody understands laning phase differently. Like Western teams will understand laning phase as something that's like, you know what, that's just I'm gonna get punished if I pick this matchup, so I'm not gonna pick this matchup. And it's like well that's your limitation. That's a little rant I had there. I just I don't one know. thing I do think will be interesting is this mm. world Salty Western analyst. <laughs> I know. Salty. Because um so many teams are gonna be trying to figure out like the the patch you could have like a, a whole bunch of different um, interpretations of the meta, which can, like, it could be really interesting to see how they match up. And additionally, um, I also think that when you go into a Worlds or like international competition like this, um, one of the more interesting aspects is that teams tend to fall back on like what's comfortable to them, but what's comfortable to them is going to be different than what's comfortable to like another region, which uh, I guess kind of ties back into your point in terms of uh, either overvaluing the leaning phase or, or just not having one completely, mm. which is why, I don't know, we need more international competitions, I guess yeah. is my favorite point. See, the greatest thing about international competition, or at least the thing I love, is just brackets. Ah, I love brackets. And then, like, thinking of the possible clashes, but they never happen anymore. And the only time it happens is legitimately the end the end of the season, where it just kind of doesn't matter, because you just don't see them doing anything for the next four months or something. It's just, oh, well. So, I think that's, actually, I think that's all the topics that we've covered. Um, Okay. Is that it? Do we just go into shout outs here? Yeah, I guess. Ideally. I, yeah, let's go into Let's do it. Well, if let's we have do it. To. If we have. Alright. This is not episode all the time. <laughs> it's not even. Uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. Alright, Drex and lead us off. It's your shout outs. Alright. So I'll give a usual shout out to Esports Heaven and the panelists. And Thank I also you. want to give a special shout out to. Uh, at Heckmeister, mm -hmm. because the guy is not a native English speaker, and he's doing like a thousand word previews every day, and he does it at work on his cell phone. And he's that's actually, hilarious. by the way, he's the most like, hilarious guy. Why, I love why would you do that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's like his only free time. So he texts it out on the cell phone, but he doesn't just do that. He like formats the images in like text and shit. Like I, I usually have to fix it afterwards, and I obviously have to proof it and stuff. But like. The, the shit, like, I can't believe the guy actually fucking writes these huge previews. They're actually pretty good <laughs> on, his, on his fucking phone. Like, yeah. he checks it out. Jesus really. Christ. I so, love yeah. this guy, man. Shout out, I shout read out to his LGD preview and I was, like, giving him criticism and I was just like, damn, now that I think that he's doing it on his cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Just Kelsey, you phone. dick. <laughs> <laughs> right. I gave him good feedback. Alright, alright. <laughs> okay. Alright, with okay. that note, Kelsey, uh, shout outs. Uh, shout out to the Score Esports. Speaking of previews and doing all of the European and Chinese ones, mm -hmm. uh, 
Shout outs to, to, to at Fiona on Fire, who's doing all the North American and Korean ones. And we also have uh, Nicholas Doucet, who's been doing more and more feature related writing for us. Um, and he will be doing all, all the wild card previews. So, oh, that's nice. Uh, you should check those I'm out. That guy's doing all, all the wild card and LMS. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Micro members, Nick. Yes. Um, yeah, he'll be doing the uh, LMS and the wild card previews. So, that's pretty exciting. Um, and yeah, just generally shout out to everyone here and the stuff that they'll be doing. Also, shout out to Frosk, who will, is doing some video content during the offseason, and we might ha have her on the show. Um, oh, the hype! I guess oh, can we get Frost and Hugo again? Yeah. Oh, so. oh, Dude, we need this. We need it. Oh, yeah. I'll take a backstage, like, that episode, like, two of us volunteer to go off and just, like, let them go at it while the other two referee, like, this is ideal. Anyway, we can have, like, six... Yeah, OG show, what are you talking about? We can about? have a six slots, just, like, six <laughs> slots That's going horrible. on. Dude, four is already a stretch, to be honest, because, <laughs> yeah. like, you always have the two people yeah. describing everything, and then that one leftover person that's always, like, yeah, what they said for the last, like, 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> we just have, like, the most messiest debate show that I, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, um... Speaking of too many slots, we're also going to have um, the LGD Gaming, uh, the new Orin, yeah, uh, Rayra, come on next week to talk about LGD, and we'll have a big LGD episode that's hopefully from more of the, um, less of the super hardcore analytical side and more of the get to know the team side. So. Yay! Yeah. Alright, and uh, stay put, so like, maybe a day afterwards when the drama hits so <laughs> <laughs> about the show after afterwards. Oh god. Alright, um... <laughs> Okay, Emily. Oh, anyway, <laughs> Emily. Yeah, um, shout out to LOL Esports, Liquid Legends, and Follow Esports, which are the three places I've been writing. Um, Follow Esports is going to be a lot more feature related stuff. If you want to see me lay my bleeding heart on the table, my love for KT, I wrote about the 2013 Bullets and how a bunch of their members are coming back. It's really good, actually. I really like that one. Thank you. Nice. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. I enjoyed it because, like, I love KT, so it's my chance to kind of, I guess, uh, profile a team that means a lot to me personally. Mm. Um, and also, like, my writing and even just getting involved in esports wouldn't have happened if I hadn't happened to see that team. So, nice. um, and then also, LL Esports, I'm doing Group A preview um, and a bunch of other stuff for them, so look forward to that. And also, I'll be doing a bunch of previews for Liquid Legends, so I'm going to be doing a ton of content. I already did uh, LGD, um, Coup Taggers, and uh, Pain Gaming, and I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff, obviously, for Pain on um, on Liquid Legends, because that's a team that I think a lot of people don't know a lot about. Um, and, I don't know, who knows, I might do a video on them, too, just regarding their chances and how they're not at all like Kaboom. Um, and then shout out, lastly, to Brant Steel Hunger Games Simulator, which I used to. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Input all of the uh, input all of the members of group. I've only done group A so far, but it was actually really fun. People liked it, so I'm probably gonna end up doing the other groups too. Yeah. Um. That that thing is hilarious. That is pretty funny. I think everyone was pretty entertained by it. So, shout out to that too. Oh. Whoever okay. designed that. Greatest really idea really possible. Like yeah, I've never even seen or read the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There's the real. Oh my god. I have. I read the first one, and then I have the second one. I wanted to read it, but then I never got around to doing and it. And you so. call yourself a writer. Oh my god. Emily. Tisk, <laughs> tisk. <laughs> but yeah, for my shout outs, shout out to Team Dignitas. Shout out to. Honestly, the panelists and their the new art articles that they're coming out with. Read them, god damn it. It's good stuff. Uh, I will be having some more video content possibly in the future. That's I like the idea behind it. And I want to make it short and concise. So while you see people like um, Thorin and quite honestly like and Richard Lewis coming out with these 50 minute videos, I want to stop that because usually if I, if I let it drag on that long it's just going to be me ranting or rambling and I want to be able to have concise videos so I can practicing I mean practice on being more concise with my points. See that's it's a little me time. So, uh, <laughs> so I think that's I liked it. your video, Raz. I really oh, liked it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's the one you put out the other day. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, all right. So that's closing out the show. Everybody wave off to the fans.
correct. Him stylistically. Yeah. Or did I say Zion? I think Zion. Zix. Yeah. Yeah, Zix, okay. Sorry. Zion, Zix. Zix, Zix and x -Mithy. Zion knows yeah. all about the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my bad. You might even see a positive output just simply because of a lot of the uh hey Alex Smithy as a jungler. Which is which is honestly kind of like a, it's it's justified hate because like his team fighting is it like is kind of off a lot I of think times. he did good in the playoffs. In, in, in the playoffs yeah, he's done he did really well. well in the finals. Yeah. So it's in, it's gonna be interesting to see how the difference between him and who he and how they play as a team. Um so, we'll see how that works out. For Group B, though, this is where we all come in. Um, Fnatic, IG, AHQ, Cloud9. It's time. All right. Let's go with Emily. You ended up with the last one. Yeah. Will you start out this time? Um, so, I think IG is going to take the top spot. Um, here's where I actually think that in spite of the fact that HQ, I honestly believe them to be a poor matchup for Fnatic based on playstyle, just mm -hmm. because I think their early game is something that Fnatic has not, no answer for. Yeah. Um, but I actually think Fnatic will end up taking the second spot um, in this group. Uh, and again, it's really close between those two. Like, it wouldn't shock me to see HQ take that second spot. Um, I do think, and like, I hate. I hate picking IG. Like, even when they look so strong, I hate picking them because they're so inconsistent. And mm. this is why I didn't even pick them to make it out of the um, out of the, the regional qualifier because their top is so high and their, like, worst is so bad. Yeah, like, I'm going to have, like, a rant so about that one later watch. on. Yeah. But, um... I think that at for the at the very least in groups, I think they'll be fine. Like mm -hmm. especially considering that it's going to be on um, a new like the new patch, as you mentioned. Um, I think IG they they draft their drafts are typically super on point. These visa issues filled out as yeah. opposed to um, having who he. I think who he will be fine in terms of. You know, just base mechanics, being able to play the jungle, etc. The jungle's a really important position for me, um, and I think that Carsa will actually, as Kelsey alluded to, have a huge advantage there. As far as I do know, though, um, they are playing Never Lose because Kramer is back in Korea right now. So mm -hmm. um, I don't. I I actually talked to a couple people who follow right. on this a lot more closely than I do. Uh, before writing, and they uh, didn't really know why, because uh, but he could still be listed as a sub. I think um, I'm not. I'm not actually, honestly, 100 percent sure about that. But um, going in, you want to make the assumption that they're actually going to be playing NL and and Sword Art. Um, a lot of people are talking about King Gaming, and obviously that's a team that I'm very like very very familiar with. Um, I think that they have a chance to play spoiler in this group. I also think that if if a wildcard team ever had a chance of making it out of groups, this is definitely like, like I feel like all four of these teams were looking at this group and they're like, oh yeah, I got this. <laughs> like, this is such an easy group. All yeah. right, we can do this. Um, I think Ku looked very strong in the gauntlet. And additionally, the thing about Ku and uh, in subsequent interviews, like there's a really great gorilla interview out right now um, that Grace translated, one of uh, the other freelancers who works at LOL Esports. And she um, translated this interview with Gorilla. And basically, like every single interview that the Ku Tigers have done prior to uh, following the final, the summer final, and then obviously I am they've all come out and said, we're still really embarrassed. Like that still carries with us. And even though they do have certain troubles and different metas, I think this is going to be a team that isn't going to leave any sort of preparation out. Like, I feel like they'll, they'll even prepare for pain gaming, even mm -hmm. though I, I honestly don't think pain has a chance of offing, like taking even one game off the Ku Tigers. Okay. Um, I think that I actually see this. Yeah. I know that's, uh, here's like all the pain gaming should, take first but if they can't then there's a realistic shot of clg taking first also um I'm trying to think here oh yeah double was like kind of shit talking 
both KT and Ku on stream, but you know he's double if so. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows the validity of that statement, or if they even have scrim results against them? So. <laughs> All right. Now let's go to good old Kelsey. What, uh, what's your take on this group? Uh, I think it'll be Ku and CLG with Ku in first, just because uh, when we do discuss the meta changes, it chances are it'll still be top favored, and Smeb is one of the best top laners of the tournament. Also, in terms of the a lot, the power that supports have had in the current meta, like Gorilla is really, really good. The, the big question for me is CLG versus Flash Wolves, because even though CLG is theoretically better than Flash Wolves in terms of a player-by-player -player basis and everything else, I think that Karsa is really good as a jungler, and the fact that CLG will be hurting in terms of jungle synergy might be a way of something that the Flash Wolves can exploit, because I would say like the big strong points of their team are their jungle and support. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Of course, if they are playing Never Lose, I thought for a while they had Kramer. Like, this shows how much attention I pay. Um, so what's going on, but if mm. they do play Never Lose, who's like pretty, pretty bad, um, <laughs> that's something that can easily be abused no matter how good Sword Art is, so, like, Never Lose, everyone keeps talking about Stake, but if it is Never Lose playing, that's like, he's definitely the worst player on that team, mm -hmm. uh, even with all the shit that Stake gets, so, anyway, yeah. Alright, alright, Emily, curious right. to this one. So I had to actually review this group, and by the time I think the show's released, I will have already written an article on it. But mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing for the past like couple of days is rewatching vods of these four teams and seeing how they matched up. Um, I think that based, I actually picked, and it honestly depends if they can get a Smith. Hello, everybody. Welcome to China Talk. Episode, it's not still, it's still not, you know, episode 56. Remember, it is 59 now. That, uh, that overlay is lying to you. That's how we, that's how we differentiate the real fans from the fake ones. <laughs> uh, so this, uh, China talk is going to be a little bit different in the sense that it's, it's world's times, man. It's world's, world's, we get to talk about it. The group stages were set yesterday, I, no, two days ago. Memory is beautiful. So we know what the groups are now. <clears throat> Just to freshen everyone up. Group A has CLG, Flash Wolves, Ku, and Pain Gaming. Group B has Fnatic, Invictus Gaming, AHQ, and Cloud9. Group C has SKT, H2K, EDG, and Bangkok Titans. And Group D has LGD, KT, Team Solo, Sadness, and Origin. <laughs> so, alright. Let's get into it. Uh, we're just only going to touch on Group A a little bit just to get uh, like everyone's thoughts on who's getting out of the groups. Group A doesn't have a Chinese team, so we really won't spend that much time talking about it. Uh, unless, of course, you consider Flash Wolves Chinese. <laughs> Alright, we're not going to do this. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> so Group A, just a little bit. Let's actually start with Drexen on this one, because of course this is the group of faith. Alright, Drex. Um, who do you think yeah. is getting out? CLG and Crew Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. To you be fair, gonna, though, I haven't, yeah. I haven't watched like any Flash Wolves games. Yeah. Where I have watched Pain games, but and I'm assuming who he like won't just completely get ass blasted in the jungle and be like absolutely terrible. So yeah, it'd be kind of weird if they didn't get out. Do you think it's and, gonna like, be in that order, uh, CLG or Ku, or do you think Ku? Yeah, like I don't know. It's actually hard to say because a lot of people. A lot of people, like, I'm not very educated on things that aren't SKT in Korea, yeah. but a lot of people seem to say that Ku is very, uh, like, meta-dependent. So, I mean, I guess it depends, because this is, like, the hugest patch change from any major tournament versus the regular, like, uh, various leagues going on. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if they can adapt to that, then they... Fans, all, like, two of them that watch China Talk are gonna roast me for that. Um, but I actually picked... Picked Ku and Flash Wolves, um, as weird as that sounds, because I'm also there not even high. I know I'm not even high on that. Angers fans. the pain gaming fans. Angers the CLG, fans. Dead. The CLG fans. I'm just making everyone super angry. Right. Um, I I do think though, if X Smithy plays, then 
then CLG will take second. And it's really close between those two teams. It's going to depend on the like top and bot lane being a mismatch, and then obviously the jungle being a huge mismatch. Um, the reason why I said that is actually because I think that CLG is a team how they've done well this year going back and watching all of their uh going through all their games is that they work they finally like move together as a team they finally communicate as a team and i think disrupting that communication as we've seen from even like top level teams it affects the overall team synergy and i think that's a perfect uh opportunity for the flash wolves with a jungler like karsa to take advantage of that yeah so that's my reasoning behind it. I do actually have reasoning. Did watch the games. I'm not just trying to hate on CLG. And I'm not even that high on the LMS, which is kind of sad. <laughs> so then brings anyway. brings my opinion, which is not really high on LMS. It's just literally ignorant of LMS. I have not watched a single game, folks. So yeah, same. I can't. I can't say that for you. You won't. In, in my the opinion, there's a huge pay, like discrepancy between you don't even know that the Yoli top isn't teams even and the, name the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, they don't have feelings. <laughs> They're just the flash rolls today, baby. All right. All right. Well, if we're going to be that picky, then we're going to say Chowgu Reapers every time we talk about this. Okay? <laughs> I mean, it's only fair if we're going to be specific here. They have Reapers in their game. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to say CLG and Koo Tigers, because even though I, from what I've heard, flash rolls is a great team, I still... Uh, Gonna go with my bias here and go with CLG simply because I've seen them play as a team. And even if they go with Huhi as a jungler, I think they'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, well, I mean, and also not to mention that Zion's actually working with Huhi directly to like get him caught up on jungle and how they use.